you know, you have different reasons as to why you believe what it is that you believe and everybody else has a reason for them believing and agreeing or for them not believing and disagreeing with you. Everybody has a reason. So what really is the purpose behind the Quranic revolution? Can we say that there is substantial amount of information to justify a revolution A and B, what would the purpose of that revolution be? So there are two things. Why was the revolution declared and what is the purpose of this revolution? So when you start to analyze the first questions as to the reason, the cause of the revolution, then you come to the conclusion, well, I at least come to the conclusion that yes, this revolution is not only Quranic and there was a reason behind the, you know, this, the, there was a trigger behind the declaration of this revolution and it definitely has a purpose. Just in answering the first question. But in specifically tackling the second question, which is, what is the purpose of the revolution? And that, I think, is where a lot of difference comes in between, a lot of, you know, misconceptions. Um, because I think that people are not familiar with revolutions, particularly, you know, religious, so to speak, quote-unquote, revolutions, or that were triggered by religious beliefs, sort of speak, uh, I think people, you know, that in itself is a something new for the modern day. Thank you. Something new for the modern day, you know. What do you think? Mm. So, what's the purpose of the revolution? Yes, of the Quranic revolution. Uh, a revolution does not necessarily. The revolution does not have a purpose. You don't have a purpose in order to. Well, revolution it comes as a result of something that developed. Yes. And not necessarily with the intention of, or having a purpose. It just comes. It's just natural. Yes. So. I don't know. That's, that's kind of the definition of revolution. Yes. So... Comes, the revolution comes, it's like it builds up and it becomes a revolution. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that's why, you know, I, I mentioned two questions. So we answered the second question, or you at least answered the second question, was, does this revolution have a purpose? And in answering the second question, you went to the extent to say that a revolution takes place as a cause of something. Something took place and a revolution happened because of that. Yeah, or something, or it could be many things, took place and developed and caused a revolution. Okay. So many things took place, developed, and the revolution was born out of it. Yeah. All right. Or it comes on, on multiple steps. Multiple steps. Places. Very good. So. So it becomes a revolution. Okay. So, what created this Quranic revolution is what we need to to come to terms about. Then I think that's that's the main thing. What created this, you know, slogan Quranic revolution? Well, this is why I wouldn't call it revolution until. So some results are obvious. So we get to see the benefit of or the result of it. The result then, of the revolution. Then you can call it a revolution. So in order for there to be a substantiated purpose or a substantiated revolution, there need to be results of the 
action or the declaration of the revolution. Right. Got you. So I think that for myself and myself in terms of what I have or how I have reached the conclusion of understanding this to be a Quranic revolution is that over a period of 25 years, the model in which majority, if not all, we should just say most of the uh, quote-unquote Islamic centers, masjids in the Richmond, Virginia area, uh, definitely displayed their lack of interest in the Quran, specifically in terms of developing a substantiable amount of education. In other words, uh, you go from, if you look specifically in the line of education, there were at one point five Muslim schools in, this, in, the, in the surrounding city of Richmond, Virginia. Now, and, and they ranged anywhere from, you know, kindergarten until uh, high school at that time. Um, and even in those quote-unquote Muslim schools or Islamic schools, there was very little amount of the Quran being taught there. And I can speak because from that perspective, because at least one semester I taught at the high school. At that time, it was called Tawhid Prep. And I remember specifically having a very, very, very uh, 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 tense conversation with the principal at that time because uh, the Quran itself was not only being taught well enough, but just the purpose of it itself was not being elaborated enough. So from there also we can say that uh, if you're talking ICVA or you're talking ICR or you're talking... Uh, West End Islamic Center, or you're talking ISGR, no matter which of these settings you're talking about, you see a very high turnover rate, a very low wage for the Quranic uh, professional, and even to fill the gap of the uh, lack of Quranic education. And this, of course, uh, developed what is known as lack of application and practice of the Quran. To where now uh, uh, the first declaration was that uh, the selection or we should say appointment of Quranic educators was not based on uh, any type of Quranic revelation whatsoever. It was not found also in the example of the Prophet ﷺ when he assigned leaders, when he assigned uh, commanders, this was not done according to his example, and therefore it was against the Qur'an, and as uh, one, or as those who are of the progeny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to call out falsehood when we see it, and it is false, for uh, one who does not have knowledge, but has a lot of influence, a lot of wealth through these Western colonial means uh, gaining influence and power and status, and then assigning Qur'anic uh, institutions or educators, which was the first declaration that is a false practice. It was a model that was formulated in order to subdue uh, those who want to further their Quranic education and application. I think that was the, from, from the recollection, specifically in the case of ICR, where over 20 years ago, when they initially established, they were establishing also a Quranic education program so that those who would lead the community would be from within the community. But we see after 15 years, a very high turnover rate, a very small amount of graduates from those uh, particular programs that were set over so many years ago and also not finding any of them today leading at ICR specifically in terms of being a residential imam or what have you of the liking, as they had initially said, that has not taken place. Similar is the case of uh, 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 the, the, the Henrico place Al-Fala, same exact thing, where you have 
uh, those who are influential, whether it's politically in the county, they're assigning, quote unquote, whether it is, uh, uh, let's say, getting some young new graduate to replace those whom they do not like or they do not want to hear the true message, so they are replacing. And this was the first declaration that if you do not have the correct leaders in position to give the correct application of the Quran, then how is it possible that you will also be able to uh, practice your religion as a believer, one who uh, believes in Allah, one who wants to live according to what he prescribed, how can you do so under such leadership? That was the, so the leadership perspective was the first uh, thing that triggers, and again, it goes back a course of 25 years, particularly uh, from the, 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 the South Side Center. But we will move on to what created or what was the second uh, trigger. The second trigger is really from a financial or economic perspective. The uh, declaration there, which was initially done at Al Falah back in 2021, was that the way that the zakah uh, was being even taken and distributed is not found in the Quran. Neither it is it found in the life of the Prophet ﷺ to be having done that way. But again, it still triggers over to the type of leadership that you have. And we look again going back 27 years in uh, the vicinity where you have uh, absolutely no plan, no uh, perspective for the, the, the social infrastructure of our society, knowing that is the first in priority is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Where is it done to a building? No, it's done to the people. The people themselves uh, calling for a reform, uh, wanting to be in peace and harmony and fairness and justice, know that the only way is al-Islam. So this was, again, uh, the, the reason behind the, the, the Quranic declaration, revolution of 2021. The next thing was, of course, many who wanted to, to get married, they would, uh, they would be shunned because of the fact that maybe they did not want to get married legally. Also, they were case, so they would come into, you know, the situation of uh, not being able to have that done at these centers. And so we would get uh, case after case regarding that. Or maybe one uh, had uh, a wife and wanted to take on a second wife or whatever the case may be. They would not marry them, which was completely unfair. If two people want to get married, as long as they are Muslim and they are uh, uh, under the banner of Islam and they're doing it accordingly, they should be able to be married. But because of the fact that you want to show your, 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 your political uh, might or your, your friends in politics or your Western society and colonialist way that, you know, we are so like you, we're not going to tolerate anybody marrying more than one wife. So this was the, the third thing, the third point in which uh, the, the, the revolution itself, uh, its declaration also declared that this was an issue. And we've already spoken of the case of uh, the education. When you have uh, Sunday schools or you have Islamic schools where uh, uh, children are being raised into being big kids and just not having any sense of uh, responsibility, discipline and maturity, from the Islamic perspective, majority, which of course had been discovered uh, much recently, that uh, the men in Islam today do not know the men in Islam from yesterday. What is the reason? Uh, men yesterday knew when they were men. They understood what their responsibilities were as they became men. Uh, and of course, they had fresh example from the Prophet ﷺ, Yet um, here today, uh, we do not have, or the majority of the masses, the masses themselves do not understand that they are even now mature. We went about that several weeks ago. Uh, when does a male in Islam become mature? When they start to grow hair? Is it when they uh, start to feel their voice becoming deep? When does it actually happen? And majority of men, elder men did not know that it was uh, when they experienced their first uh, known 
as uh, the, the wet dream in English. So we're just going to keep it simple. Um, but if a man does not know that they are a man and they do not have the education to not only inform them that they are a man, but what their responsibility is as a man, then obviously this is a, uh, a, 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 uh, an impact, a negative impact on the society. And it's been going on for, for many, many generations. Uh, and lastly was the military uh, life of the Prophet والسلام, the Madani period, uh, looking at a total of 28 Madani surahs. This is a military phase, and um, the life of the Prophet والسلام, from the migration to his last breath was all a military uh, example, which uh, we found it to be uh, intentionally abducted and deducted and uh, extracted from the teachings in which uh, many khatibs are saying today, many imams are claiming that, you know, uh, uh, jihad was never prescribed in Mecca when that is absolutely false. Uh, when they're saying that we are in a Meccan period, so we must take, uh, you know, the weakness that we're in, <coughs> excuse me, as it was back then, um, giving falsified statements and finding it to be uh, a fraudulent means of deception, obviously, the masses and to keep us uh, subjugated. So I think that uh, lately the military component of this, which is the Madani period, and we also have the era of Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, now we're into Khalid ibn al-Walid and his engagements in, uh, in Yamama. And I'm sure that as we, because I remember reading these texts that make up the series of the Prophet والسلام's legendary military career, that uh, Khalid ibn al-Walid later on goes to Iraq and he faces off the empire there, the Sassanid empire. And then he also, in the time of Abu Bakr, goes to Sham and he faces the, the Romans there in Asham. And then, obviously, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu returns to Allah and appoints Umar ibn al-Khattab to be the Khalifa, at which point Umar ibn al-Khattab replaced him. But these are all details in which uh, our, our people really need to, to revisit and understand. And the reason behind uh, visiting you know, our history is knowing where we come from, is being able to have the understanding in the sense of our identity as Muslims. Because without understanding our identity, we actually lose the purpose in, in life. And I think that will be, you know, that would be ideal as to let, you know, everyone know that this is not uh, uh, anything other than an intellectual, professional uh, spiritual, if you may, revolution. Definitely it is ongoing. It was declared in 2021. Time and time again, we have seen since then the substantiation of information, the substantiation of intellect in terms of why this actually is uh, turning out result after result as to being on the right track. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I think that um, you know, again, looking at the, the Madani period and the era of Abu Bakr Siddiq, the era of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab is very crucial. And uh, not stopping there and going further and waking up. Uh, the purpose of this, again, is to, is to, is to, is to wake up ourselves uh, and, and reform ourselves within ourselves uh, and realize that the Quran is really the only passport we have for the Akhirah. Um, if we do not live by the Quran or we do not die by the Quran, then you know we have no 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 prospects in the Akhirah. This is the important uh, aspect of it. So I think by knowing and understanding um, what I have seen mainly done. Um, from a personal perspective, is that there is Quranic activity every single day. There is more um, research or exploring the, the, the facts because everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but everyone is not entitled to their own facts. So this is the, you know, the wake-up of that. 
This is, if you may, the, the ideal, you know, the ideal reason behind it, if that makes sense to you. And that makes it a revolution. Yes, that's ex exactly, that is, that is revolutionary, I'm sorry. Of course, you know, you're talking, number one, authority. Number two, the disbursement of, of, of treasury, the Muslim funds, you understand. Number three, the social component of marriage. And number four, the military component. And uh, militarily, you have an administrative, you have an operation side. And definitely is something that uh, we are lacking because we do not have discipline in our communities. Obviously, if there was a military component, you would have the discipline in it. So, uh, you know, and then you're talking about the masculinity. So these are all reasons behind because the Quran... Uh, is, 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 is having the answers and the solutions to everything. Allah Ta'ala put it in there. You see? So this is the reason. But I think that, that I'm glad you asked that question. It was a very good question. Would you like to add anything else to that, brother? Because really, again, as I mentioned to you before, the Brothers Intelligent Incorporated Brothers has a very, very, very big component in the information sector. So we don't want to leave without complimenting the brothers, intelligent incorporated brothers, and the brothers, brothers incorporated brothers, all of the attaches of the brigade. I think that's 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 good enough. Okay, well, brother. So I think that that's enough. Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. We should, we should, we should go in details on every uh, component. So yes, five, yes, I would. Revolution. Yes, yes, I would agree with that assessment. I would agree with that assessment. It's nice that you know we have the the the, the script, you know, of the Quranic revolution. Um, but to get the military component out, I do not think that we're going to go beyond Uhud. I think that Uhud is going to have to really resonate in the hearts and minds of the people. Knowing the battle of Uhud, the causes of the battle of Uhud, and what transpired during that battle is really essential. They did not do half its justice in the message, the movie, the message. But um, I think that the military expeditions from 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 uh, 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 the very first engagement, the very first expedition by Abdullah ibn Jahsh till all the way till Uhud, you're looking at at least 15 or 16 different military expeditions that the Prophet ﷺ himself uh, delegated. So how is it that, you know, you, you're missing all of that in the message and you just come up to Uhud and then Fatah Makkah, it, it is not right. So understanding, you know, those companions from the youngest one to the oldest one in the scenes that, you know, we're writing now. I think yeah. it's, it's very important, inshallah. And we're only looking for Allah Ta'ala's, you know, His accord and His mercy. We're not looking for anything else. In ajriya illa ala Allah, you know. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ In ajriya illa ala Allah. I'm not asking for your compensation. This is what all of the prophets were told. This is what Allah said that they told their people. And uh, today is no different. If we are following the examples, we have to say the same thing. In ajriya illa ala Allah, our reward is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think that will wrap it up, brother. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.